Hey guys, it's GHP and welcome to a spoiler review video. So, we have a bunch of new cards and we actually have a new mechanic we're going to talk about today. So let's talk about Worm Calling to start off. So it's a 3 mana double time spell. We don't have a lot of time spells that are good. Uh, create and draw two seven seven sandworms. So this card is doing something powerful where it's making overstated bodies as I'll pull up the sandworm now. As you'll see, it is seven, it is a five minute card. So it's making cards that are above stat line. It's also relevant for something like Moment, where it's actually a spell it's creating. This also works at something like Crown of Possibilities. The general gist, I think, with this card is that it's going to be bonkers in draft because it's so much power. You can end turn six with 14 power from like. One card, I guess, is how we're going to describe this, even though, yeah, it's one card, let's be real. Alright, in Constructed, this has some amplifications of this is so bigger than everything else that it's curved slot. That you take turn 3 off, and then turn 5, you should, in theory, stop the entire ground, unless, of course, your opponent has removal. Um, I think this is probably going to be worse than Seropod, uh, purely because of Dark Return synergies. Uh, and the decks that would want bodies like this, if it's not moment, is this. So if it spells matters, this would probably be better than Seropod. But those decks don't really play Recursion. I think if you have access to Recursion, you want to be playing uh, Seropod instead. But they're kind of competing at the same spot, in my opinion. I think this card will see Subconstructed play. Especially if moment-style decks, for example, just try to play more creature spells like this. Because this is a powerful card. You're making just good... You're making good cards. Um, to note, this is another one of these cards that actually makes units. And this is relevant for some of the weapons we've gotten, where it's like the one that uh, Platypus and Mantid spoiled, uh, where they pull a unit from their deck. Well, this doesn't count as a unit, so you can put it on this, although you don't really want to sacrifice these. But it is another card to put in that style of deck if you're trying to play just units. Could tokens want this? I think the answer is going to end up being is they have too many things they want to do and this is worse than say obliterate or hurt. And it's not going to replace hurt. Um, in a different world this could be a thing or maybe if it's maybe a mono time tokens that could be a deck one day. I think this could go great, great in that deck. But we'll see. I think this card's pretty good though and it's going to see some play for sure. I'm just not sure how much. Uh, next card we're going to look at if I can find it. It's Marionate Cross. Uh, so it's 3 mana, triple shadow. Triple shadow is a lot. Play a 5-5. Five, five. When this relic dies, sacrifice all your marionette dice, or whatever it's called. The 5-5s. Five, um, now input what the other card is uh, that it's making. So it's a 3 mana, 5-5, five, five, triple shadow. Um, and when it dies, blow up all your relics of the marionette cross. So what this is is a chain reaction. So this is a 3 mana 5-5 five five that's bad in multiples, is what this is saying. I think a shadow-based, probably mono shadow-based, aggressive or mid-range deck probably wants access to 2 or 3 of these. Um, I think it's probably too heavy influence otherwise to be worth it, because you really want this on turn 3 exactly. And it gets worse the longer you go, and it's bad at multiples. Um, but I think as just an upfront body, this card is powerful. It's... It's also good if you can maybe bounce the relic. I would just make more of these potential in the future that's relevant. Um, although then you have the doomsday scenario. But I think this card is very, very powerful. Just because it's making these overstatic static units. And you didn't really have a payoff to your mono shadow yet. I think this might be one. Um, it's a card I'm excited to try. It's a card I'm going to try. And I could also see this card failing miserably because of its influence cost. I don't think you want to play this in like Xena midrange or anything like that. It's also not the best dark return target, like compared to Orc Interrogator, I'd rather that. Um, but I think this card is doing something powerful, and I think it's like... Uh, maybe even like a top end of Mono Shadow aggro, this might just be a good card in that type of deck, where... Uh, you can kind of hold back if you have multiples because you're probably already ahead on board. But I think this card's quite good, and I definitely think it will see some amount of play. But purely because of its color requirements, it may be too hard to actually make work. 
Now, we got an article today. And it introduced a new mechanic, which I'm going to tell you about here. Oh, wait, we have Living Offering. I'm really good at this. We have one other card. Too bad, 2-2. Two -two. Cortis, not relevant yet. Pay one and sacrifice it to silence an enemy unit. So I think this card is not good and constructed. Uh, although what this card is, is an easy tribute effect. And that's relevant. Um, I think the tribute on this card could come up if tribute becomes actually good. Like if we have good tribute cards that are worth the payoff. They could draft this card it's great. Because it's an okay body and then it has a good effect. Um, but I think it constructed, unless you can really make use of a tribute effect, there's probably better options. And even in time, there's better, there's probably better silence effects. Um, like Archive Curator doesn't kill itself to do it. So I think this card is like, okay, but probably not good enough for the state Eternal is currently in. This is the type of card that could be playable if we get a rotation, for example, or you lose like set one and two. Um, because it's not a bad card or anything. It's just probably too weak compared to the cards we have. Now let's actually talk about the new mechanic that I wanted to talk about earlier, and then realized I'm an idiot. Alright, let's look at the merchants. Um, so we have a cycle, and we have all the cards, and I'll be showing you them all. And they are a 3 mana card with a battle skill, and they summon to... You may choose to swap a card for your hand with a, color, a card of this card's color uh, in your market. So what your market is, is when you build your deck, you make this five card, almost like a sideboard or extra deck, whatever you want to look at it as. And it, it's five cards of your choice uh, that you could put in there. You cannot have more than five of a card in there. Uh, so five between your deck and that, so you can't put four harsh rules main and one in there. Um, but you can do three harsh rules and one in the, the market. Um, to note that power is considered of its color, so a fire sigil is a f fire card. A stone scar banner is both fire and shadow. Uh, also, for example, if I'm doing a stone scar effect, so my f this Ixtune merchant can go get me uh, Maiden, uh, because it is a fire card, but it's also a fire shadow card. But it counts as a fire. Um, this effect is super powerful. Uh, it, it's good when you're flooding, because you can just get rid of a power, to go get something else. You can go play some sideboard style cards. Like maybe a Ruin. Or Cloud of Ashes one that comes to mind for fire. Um, so let's evaluate each one of these. Uh, 3 out of 3, 3 Overwhelm. With this effect that's pretty good. Now Fire I think has probably the weakest pool of cards. That it wants to get. But specifically Cloud of Ashes. Is the one that comes to my mind is like the best one. Uh, maybe you could play some removal in there. Like a, a fourth obliterate or whatever. But you can really i think this like this card is good because it's an okay stat line with an amazing effect um so now let's pull up the other ones and let's talk about each one but i think i think they're all like powerful because the effect is very good but some of these are going to be better than others so we got winchest merchant the justice one it's a 2-2 two -two of flying i think this one's pretty bad um, when it comes to the body you get with it. Now the effect is still pretty good. It might make this playable. Probably is. But it's a weaker body. 3 mana 2-2 two -two fire is not great. Um, a deck like Argeport may want to consider this. And they can throw like. A blood letter in. Uh, in this slot for example. Because the matches you really want. Like the matches you want blood letter. You really want it. But sometimes you just don't want to draw it. So instead you could get something else when you draw this. Um, Aurelian Merchant, 3 mana 1, 4, plus some maximum power. This card's great. This is probably the best one. Um, the effect is nice. It's a good body, 3 mana 1, 4. Uh, to note, in time, you can go get a Chalice. That's pretty good. So, in Justice, you can get, like, Butter, Slay, Tavrod, Harsh Rule, things like that. Uh, in time, you can get Killer Spells, Wasp, uh, Carnosaur, Titan, Displacer, Slow, uh, Time Weaver, I guess, if you want to go for that instead. You can do things like, well, this ramps me, so maybe I should put, like, a 5-drop in there. Uh, but you can get Chalice, you can get Crown, you can get Clock Roaches. So you can put, like, stuff like that, so it's easier to find them. So these can be, like, your your fo uh, your 4th through 7th copy of a card, where you put 3 in your main, and then you put 1 in the board, and then you play 4 of these. Uh, Shadow 1. It's 2-1 Deadly. 
So this body dies to a lot of things, but at the same time, this card can trade it for something and get you the effect. It's solid. Shadow decks want these. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of card draw in Shadow right now. This is kind of card draw. And then uh, Primal is a 3 2 Aegis, weaker body, but it's going to be good. Primal has probably the best bullet cards where it gets store, uh, the different storms. It can get Lightning Strike, Channel, Rain of Frogs. Uh, I guess I should mention Shadow can get Azendo's Gift, which is very good, or Strain to Shadow. Um, these building decks with these is going to be interesting. I can very easily imagine Felon Control, for example, playing eight merchants in total and it having like Azendo's Gift, Annihilate, Ranger's Choice, Thunderstrike Dragon, Rain of Frogs, for example, as its pool of five cards. Just cards that like you want in some spots but don't want in every matchup because most of those are situational. Just as an example, or Feeding Time, because then you can get, either one can get Feeding Time. Um, I think they're all solid. I think specifically the Time one is the best body, um, but depending on the cards you want to get with these determines how good they are. I think they're all very playable. I think they're all going to see a fair bit of play, though. Uh, so, I'm really excited to play with these cards, to be honest, but that's going to be in today's video. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in, and of course, I'll see you in the next spoiler review session.